Hello, everybody. This is the Catholic Esquire again, com coming to you the day after Ash Wednesday. I hope everybody's Lenten season got off to a good and holy start. And in fact, that's what I want to talk about today was Lent. It occurred to me a lot of people, I'm hoping that watch this channel, are considering um, making that transition like I did from Novus Ordo to tradition. And one of the biggest differences you're going to find between a traditional Latin Mass community and a Novus Ordo community is the way Lent is treated or handled or approached. I thought it'd be useful just to talk about some of those differences today and why they're so important. And perhaps it'll encourage those who are contemplating coming into tradition to doing so. Now, I'm well positioned to talk about this. I attended Novus Ordo Mass uh, my whole life, pretty much. Um, uh, and quite regularly uh, for 10 years, uh, at least, up until about 2018, 2019, when I started making that movement into tradition. I attended several different Novus Ordo parishes, so I have a good flavor for how Lent is approached in different places. Um, and I've also uh, attended FSSP and SSPX, traditional Catholic parishes. So I can at least give you my own personal thoughts and observations on this issue. I'm not going to get into the details of the specific requirements uh, that are different. Um, Taylor Marshall does has done yeoman's work on that. I'd encourage you to check him out if you have questions about the history of Lenten fasts and penances and how they've changed over the years and and even what's good practice now. I just really want to compare and contrast the Novus Ordo to the traditional world today on Lent. You know, one of the biggest differences you're going to notice is the preparation period up to Lent, right? So the last uh, several weeks, if you attended a TLM, traditional Latin Mass, you'll notice the priests were already wearing purple. There was already a season of penance beginning um, as we count down the days to, to Lent. You know, why do we count down the days to Lent? Why do we have to prepare for Lent? Well, because traditionally Lent is supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be a fruitful, but nevertheless spirit, but nevertheless somewhat difficult period of time where we come to grips with the fact that we are, in fact, sinners. We've harmed God very much by our sins. That Christ, out of pure love and gift to us, but more importantly, as a matter of justice, had to die on the cross and suffer a bloody, bloody, awful passion and death because of the sins we've committed. You know, we have to come to grips with that. And that often involves detaching ourselves from things of this world, which interfere with our ability to um, our ability to recognize how we need to improve and become more holy and that's why the church is always taught to engage in penances and fasting during this lenten period and they provided a framework for us to do that you know rules um, i know people don't like to hear rules no one likes to hear rules when it comes to spirituality but really, the point is, is, is it's a gift from the church over centuries and centuries that have developed to help us become more holy. Because the church knows, as fallible human beings, we are attached to things of this world. And what are we most attached to? I'd say today, Americans are attached to entertainment, sex, and food. Those are the things that we are most attached to. And with respect to all three of those things, they interfere with our ability to become more holy. They interfere with our ability to recognize our own sinful nature, and it disrupts our relationship with God significantly, oftentimes. And so the church provides rules of penances and fasting. Unfortunately, now in the post-Second Vatican Council world and Novus Ordo parishes, you're not going to hear about those traditional practices, quite frankly. Sure, you'll hear that you're not supposed to eat meat on Fridays now during Lent. Uh, but what about the other days of Lent? In tradition, at least as up to 1962, 
Um, you're supposed to engage in a fast and partial absence from meat every day of Lent. I mean, it, 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 it's amazing. Um, we never heard about that when I was in the Novus Ordo Parish because the church didn't require it anymore. I mentioned under video, other videos, they got completely rid of ember days, which also was fasting requirements. And they got rid of the partial abstinence and fasting requirement for the weekdays during Lent as well now. Again, that's just a way to kind of prick us, right? To try to remind us, hey, you know, Christ suffered a very painful passion for us in his death. We need, we need to do better. We need to control our appetites. We need to control our passions. And having that constant reminder on a daily basis is really helpful. I, I certainly try to uh, follow that re uh, requirement under the traditional calendar. Um, and I'd encourage you to do that as well. So that's one of the big, one of the big differences there. The other issues I think are more theological, quite frankly. It's the attitude. Uh, big difference between tradition and Novus Ordo world. I talked about in a video about a year ago um, how the calendar, uh, the new calendar, erased Passion Sunday. I'd encourage you to go check that out because I talked there about how the modernists distorted the notion of Paschal mystery. They created a whole new theology around this notion of Paschal mystery, which completely infiltrates the Novus Ordo churches with a new idea about the nature of Christ's work on the cross. And in that video, I talked about how the focus is shift from the notion of sacrifice and suffering and Christ's suffering for us on the cross as a matter of justice for our sins, for our salvation, to God's love for us. It was just simply done out of love, not because it had to be done out of justice or because we, des we deserve punishment. It was just because God loves us. He loves us so much. And then when we can focus on the resurrection, you know, let's de-emphasize that bloody, nasty death stuff. You know, that, that kind of stuff turns people off. We don't want to talk about that. That's uncomfortable. Let's focus on the resurrection. This is, all goes into this notion of Paschal mystery, and it infiltrates all of the Lenten season as well. Not just the elimination of Passion Sunday, as I talked about in that video. My friends, we have to remember Holy Mother Church is so good to us. Holy Mother Church for centuries upon centuries has taught that, yeah, we should be feel some guilt about our sins. It's not just a matter of us be nice to our neighbors. It's not a matter of God just loving us no matter whatever we do, that we're going to be saved, just like the Protestants, Protestants think. You know, Lent is not just a time for us to, you know, be a better person, if that makes sense. I mean, ultimately, we want to become more holy, but it's not just a time for us to, yeah, you know, let's, let's, Let's uh, shake a few things up, and maybe we could uh, uh, be a little nicer to people, and and uh, maybe we should just do those sorts of things. Well, there's nothing wrong with engaging in more charitable acts during the Lenten season, and you should. But when you entirely shift the focus, as the new church has done, it fails to remind us, it fails to guide us, and it fails to encourage us to undertake the necessary fasting and penances. Penances that actually hurt a little bit, you know? It fails to encourage us to do those things in order to help us to become more holy and to recall the passion, death, and yes, resurrection of Christ on the cross. Those things are almost completely eliminated now and replaced with this happy sappy, everybody's cool, you're good, I'm good. We can do a little better on some things, but at the end of the day, we'll all be saved kind of notion that you get in a typical Novus Ordo parish and in this world of the Second Vatican Council. So I'd encourage everybody to look into 
what was formally required is a under pain of sin, quite honestly, in, in years past. Like I said, check out uh, Taylor Marshall. He does a great job of explaining those things. Undertake maybe some penances that hurt a little bit. You know, I, I don't like to talk about what I do because it doesn't matter what I do. I don't really care when people go around bragging about what they're doing. It doesn't really matter. You know what you need to do. You know, is there something you're really attached to that you need to just, even if it's not a sinful thing, but sometimes you can still get attached to things that are otherwise good or neutral. Are those things, are you overly attached to those things? You need to divorce yourself from those in order to open up your heart and your mind to allow God in more than in years past. That's what Lent's about. And never forget the sacrifice that Christ made for us in satisfaction for our sins and offenses against God, because we have offended God. Let us not forget those things. I hope this helps. Please share the video, like, subscribe to the channel. And I hope you all have a blessed Lenten season. God bless.